Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Uh, this time the sun's out, which is nice. So yeah, this time we've got a video for you about the things we don't understand between Australia and the UK. Yeah, five things, just for fun. And um, let us know in the comments if you know the answers and uh, if there's any info that you can help share. So, I'm um, sorry guys, we had to come inside because someone was um, doing some mechanics on the side of the road and it was getting quite noisy. Um, anyway, the next one, because we're... So, one of the first things that we've been contemplating is, maybe this only applies to people that have never been to Australia or know that much about Australia, but in our whole life, we never once in the UK heard anyone refer to places such as Sydney being in New South Wales. So you would never hear the state, New South Wales, referred to in the UK. You would only ever hear of Sydney. A bit like you would never hear about the state of Victoria either. People would only refer to it as Melbourne. So we found that sort of interesting. I think it's mainly UK people don't really refer to it as that, do they, I don't think? No, I guess it's like they only know the two main places in them states, but I just thought it'd be interesting to share with the Australians here, and if there's anybody from England here that's watching, let us know if you feel the same. The next one is quite a weird one, really. I did correct someone from the UK on a post they put on Instagram, about how they were rooting for someone. And over here, rooting is... What should we say? Rooting is... Let's keep it family friendly, but rooting is when you enjoy each other's time, right? Yeah, and also, we say what route are you going to take us in on the, on the roads and stuff like that. So state route, but over here it's called state route. It's, yeah. um, also data, they call it data over here. And your favourite? Maldives is Maldives. So we thought it was funny because obviously most words between Australia and England sound the same, but there's just the odd one that is completely different. It's something to learn, I guess, but rooting is, is the one to not get caught on. <laughs> so the next thing that we don't understand, because we're not from Australia, we have often been given these really unusual coins in change. So, for example, yesterday when we took the recycling back, we got just under 20 bucks and they gave us our change and uh, you're wondering if actually you've made more than 20 bucks because some of the coins that we're finding in our change seem really unusual so we don't know if this is just a common thing here we're certainly finding more unusual coins than we would in the UK perhaps they just release them more often here and if any of you know anything about the coins that we're shown in the video please let us know because i'm a bit reluctant to give them away now in case they're worth anything maybe they're just worth 50 cents and uh, not a cent more but anyway let us know what you think so this one is reference to the afl game that we watched yesterday to do with the the fans they let the fans from opposite teams in the same sections together whereas uk if you're watching football or soccer They've got, the away fans have got their own little section that they don't mix with the home fans. Whereas over here, they seem to, well, they allow alcohol in the stands as well, whereas in the UK you're not allowed to. They're all in together, which obviously they're a bit more well behaved than the English fans, because <laughs> if the English fans were mixed together, there'd be fights. And Especially with alcohol. <laughs> God knows what, but yeah, over here, it's just quite odd how, well, not odd, I guess it's, you're used to it now, but that's something I've seen yesterday was a bit... Different. Yeah, they can't be trusted in the UK, obviously Australians are much more well behaved. Even with beer involved. <laughs> the last one is around medication, prescribed medication. So what we've noticed is that when you're given a prescription here for antibiotics, you are given way more antibiotics than you need. So, for example, our daughter just had a course of antibiotics prescribed, and quite a lot. I think she had to take, like, 24 over a period of time. But she did that course, and she still has 24 antibiotics left. So, in theory, I'm sick now. Could I take them? <laughs> Not a good idea. Probably should check with a doctor, but honestly, we're amazed at how that's like. It would 
actually count them out, they would, in the UK, they literally cut our slot off. You would not be allowed to have one more than, than you have to take. And you'd be lucky if you could even get prescribed antibiotics. They're so stingy about it. Yeah. But here, and I, I feel like that was the case when I had antibiotics before, when I went to the doctor and I had a stomach ache. I yeah. also got prescribed way more antibiotics than I needed. So I just think that's really interesting because obviously, again, you guys can be trusted not to overdose, <laughs> whereas in UK, Clearly you can't can. be trusted. Yeah, just like the <laughs> pot pills. So yeah, there, we go. That's, um, there you go. There's a, a few more things we're trying to get our head round over here. So if you've got any more, then drop them in the comments. We'd love to hear them. And uh, if you're already subscribed to us, thank you for following. If you're not subscribed, we'd love it if you'd hit the subscribe button and please like the video. And see you in the next one.